Elhamdülillah, Sübhanallah, Ustad, Vesselam, Ala Nebiyyena Muhammed. Rabbi şrah li sadri ve yassir li emri ve ahlil uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, in, in Surah Al-Qaf, that when the intoxication of death will bring the truth, that is what you are trying to avoid. And when the horn will be blown, that is the day of carrying out the threat. And every soul will come with it a driver and a witness and it shall be said you were certainly distracted and unmindful of this and we have removed from you your cover so your sight and your vision this day is sharp and his companion the angel will, will say this book this record is what is with me prepared this is what I have prepared and Allah Ta'ala will say throw into Jahannam every obstinate disbeliever a preventer of good he was an aggressor, he was a doubter, who made an equal with Allah Ta'ala another deity, then throw him into the severe punishment. And his, his devil companion will say, Our Lord, I did not make him transgress, but he himself was in extreme error. And Allah Ta'ala will say, Do not dispute before me, while I had already given you and presented to you the warning, the decree. The word will not be changed with me and never will I be unjust to the servants. On the day we will say to hell, have you been filled? And it will say, are there more? And paradise will be brought near to the righteous, not far. And it shall be said, this is what you were promised for every returner to Allah Ta'ala and a keeper of his covenant who feared the most merciful unseen and came with a heart returning enter it in peace this is the day of eternity they will have whatever they wish they're in and with us is more it's just a very rough translation of the uh, ayat we are very close and fast approaching ramadan a time when we inevitably turn our attention more with more focus and more vigor and more energy back to allah ta'ala and we dedicate our whole month day and night of the worship of Allah Ta'ala, seeking His pleasure, uh, seeking His forgiveness, seeking for, his, for our du'as to be answered, seeking for Him to hear us, seeking for the protection of the fire, seeking for success in this world and in the Akhirah. And the example of Ramadan compared to the months before is like the gathering of the clouds and the winds blowing and the clouds becoming heavy due to all the activity and then it rains in Ramadan by which then life is then nourished hearts are moistened and given life uh, for the rest of the year that action in Ramadan begins pre-Ramadan if you begin your if you begin that focus and attention and uh, drive and vigor in Ramadan, <clears throat> Ramadan will be old before you know it. So we are, whether it's four or five or six weeks before Ramadan. So this is uh, a reminder to, to us all to draw our attention back to the most important things in our lives. The most important journey that we are on and by which we shall be um, inevitably uh, either ending up in the location in how may Allah Ta'ala protect us, having to be punished for some sins, for to be cleansed and then eventually um, or, and for the rest is the final destination to genital for those to meet Allah Ta'ala in the highest abode that's supreme success that's ultimate success so we uh, intend as we've spoken before to finish Surah Al-Qaf after which we shall head into the details regarding the journey of the soul after death this is something which is which will happen to all of us and there is no coming back once a person dies, there is no coming and returning back to this world. So we are on ayah number 19. Some of these ayat we, we, we covered last week, so we won't go into too much details where we already covered. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ And comes the intoxication of mouth and it brings the truth. It brings whatever you are living your life by. If you were into money, if you were into business, if you were into women, if you were into... Uh, trying with showboating if you were 
um, into construction, if you were into dunya, if you were into properties, if you were into you know a charity work, if you were into ibadat, if you were into doing good, if you were into establishing the good and forbidding the evil, if you in, in, if you were uh, engaged in establishing the Sharia, defending the oppressed, making Allah Taala's word most high, then mouth will bring the truth. Mouth will bring the truth of what you are about. A moat will bring the truth of, to you. You should also see the truth. You shall either have a party of angels who, which come to greet you, or you shall have a party of angels to come to punish you at the time of death. وَجَاءَ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدٌ That is what you are trying to avoid. Avoid thinking about death. People don't like, don't like talking about death at all. For a disbeliever, death is the moment where your pleasures stop. And hence, why would you want to even look forward to death? Why would you ever want to think about death? This is the one thing they were trying to avoid, but this is something that nobody can, nobody can escape death. Every human being shall taste death. The most pious of people and the most wicked of people both shall taste death. Nobody can avoid. When that horn is blown and that's it, it's all over. In our mind, you could say, that's it. You know, uh, sometimes, you know, if I'm from a dunyawi perspective, that's the marker. That, that's the day that was, that was the day of warning. That was the day that we were warned about. That was the day where that warning shall come to, to, to pass. وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ Every person it will be judged. Every person will, shall, shall be assessed. Every person shall be examined. And we shall be examined. Every one of us, we shall come to the point. You just imagine looking at that scale when you are being judged and your, both your good and bad actions are, are, will be weighed. We don't know of all the good deeds that we were doing which are being accepted. So in our mind, we've calculated, okay, X, Y, Z, you know, uh, one, two, three times, you know, this many times. And we think that's going to come onto the scale and it's going to be heavy in the scale. Well, we may have performed that physical act, but who is to say that it was being accepted? And similarly, on the flip side, it's also a danger of we not realizing just how big the scale of sin and sins are. What we may look at something so small, maybe something so big in, in the eyes of Allah Ta'ala. And, and similarly, you know, that it is also true that on the, on the complete flip side, you could look at some deed that you're doing, which is a good deed, which is so minor, but that could be your ticket to Jannah. Despite and that being heavier than all the sins combined. The angels were witnessed to, they were a witness to what was being done. You were distracted, not concerned with, you were oblivious, your mind was on everything else but this. This is what you were engaging your mind with by everything but this. And now we have فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَسَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ Now all these things that were covering your vision, We've removed it all. Now, now you can see for yourself. Today your vision is going to be sharp. Today you'll see for yourself what life was about, what priorities that should have been done, where you know, sacrifices should have been made. So all these things that were covering our minds all going to be removed, all to the back, and now you can see clearly. وَقَالَ قَرِينُهُ هَذَا مَا لَدَيَّ عَتِيدٌ the angel will come and say, this book now, this is with me, this is what I've prepared. The, imagine you know, your accounts, all your accounts, all the transactions, all the bank statements. Like a bank statement, you have you know, uh, money in, money out, money in, money out. You know, you've got transactions on your page of accounts. Your transactions here are pure record of your actions themselves. Your actions themselves will be, you did this at this time, he said this, you harmed this person, you did this good deed. This is what I prepared with me. And Allah Ta'ala will say to them both, to angels, both of them, Alqiya fi jahannama kulla kaffarin anid. Throw into the hell every stubborn, rebellious disbeliever. Manna'in lil khayri mu'tadin murib. Manna'in lil khayr. The one who used to stop the good from happening. 
whether it's the good that he could have done or others could have done, he's a he's a blocker. He's a person who tries to block good from being done. Mu'atadin, a transgressor, murib, a person who is full of doubts himself. Alladhi ja'ala ma'allahi ilahan akhir. The one who made an ilah with Allah Ta'ala, made another deity, another God, another thing that he worshipped or she worshipped, along with Allah Ta'ala. So, فألقيها, so you both throw fil adab shadid into the very harsh, severe, let's say severe punishment, strong punishment. Any crime that a person does, the punishment should equal the crime. If somebody commits a murder and is given a 50 pound fine, well, you would say the punishment doesn't fit this crime. And similarly, if somebody parked on a double yellow line and was given 10 years in prison, you think the crime, the punishment does not, does not fit the, the, the crime here. With Allah Ta'ala, to punish somebody in hell severely, then the crime, then the crime must fit the punishment. So what was, what, what, was, what was so severe about that crime? The ultimate crime is the crime against Allah Ta'ala, the one who made you. The ultimate crime. قَالَ قَرِينُهُ رَبَّنَا مَا أَضْغَيْتُهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانَ فِي ذَلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ Now obviously he may, be, he, may, he may have turned straight to his blaming the person who was giving him waswas. And he will even say, our Lord, I did not make him transgress. He himself was far gone. Allah Ta'ala says, قَالَ لَا تَخْتَصِمُوا لَدَيَّ وَقَدْ قَدَّمْتُ إِلَيْكُمْ بِالْوَعِيدٍ don't argue before me. Don't argue before me. I, I, I had given you the warning already. The warning had come to you. The Quran had come to you. The messengers had come to you. And that's why in every, law, every, every nation in history, throughout geographically spread all over the world, there were messengers and prophets that were sent to all over the globe. The last of them was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was not a unique to the history of man where he's the first ever messenger of prophet no no we're saying we say he is the last of them there were thousands of others before his message he his mankind had reached the point where now there were not in no need no more need of any further messenger so this final messenger his script the scripture sent to him was to be preserved until the last na, last day and now we are on countdown we really are on countdown we are on countdown to the hellfire actually one of the f- first and the major sign that the day of judgment is coming for humanity was the sending of the last messenger that in and of itself is a sign it's a sign that now the last man the last man has come so humanity now is on literal countdown and that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in said the Yawm Qiyamah and my uh, coming is like and he put his two fingers was this close you know um, and some explain the, the gap between the forefinger and the, the finger next to it that gap that space that was how long humanity was here and how long is left before the day of judgment and Allah Ta'ala said, don't argue before me. I sent you all these, I sent you all these warnings. You were told about this. And then Allah Ta'ala would say what would, what would be probably heart-wrenching where your heart just sinks is Allah Ta'ala says, you're arguing before me. I told you already. And then Allah says, ma yubaddal wa ma ana I'm not going to change my word. I'm not going to change my word. No matter how much you now fight and cry and scream and shout, I will not change my word. And Allah Ta'ala says, look at this, amazing. I am not unjust to the slaves. Nobody will be dealt unjustly whatsoever. Meaning, I'm not going to just throw anybody in the half I'm not going to just punish anybody. But those who were warned and told, yet decided to do otherwise. We know every law of the deen, but yet not want to follow it. We know every route to khair, and yet we're making 10 excuses not to do it. We know everything that we should not do, but yet, yet do. So, and, then, and then we expect you know, uh, miracles when it comes to uh, our level of iman. It's a self-delusion.
یوم نقول لجہنم حلم تلعت و تقول حلم مزید The day we shall say to Jahannam Have you reached your fill? And Jahannam will reply Are there more to come? We know from some narrations that have been reported from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam that Jahannam is so large that the sun will be thrown into Jahannam um, amongst the many other things. The sun in its mass is a million times the size of the earth. So if the whole sun will be thrown in the fire, that just gives you some kind of indication of how big hell will be. And in another narration, in another ayah, sorry, of the Quran, in uh, Surah Al-Sad, if I just bring the ayah here, Allah Ta'ala says, uh, uh, another very scary ayah of the Quran, that, The truth is the truth that I say, when Iblis refused to bow down and do sujood before Adam, and he, and he disobeyed Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala says, the truth is the, the truth which I speak. I shall fill Jahannam with you and those who follow you. All of you all. All of you. I shall fill Jahannam. May Allah protect us. May Allah protect our loved ones. May Allah Ta'ala protect us in every direction, from every punishment. We mentioned in the last week's dars that Jannah will still have spaces left and Allah Ta'ala will create a new creation to fill the empty spaces of Jannah. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to enter Jannah. There's a narration here in Bukhari that Jannah and Jahannam it's themselves, they argue with each other. And Jahannam said, I have been favored with the arrogant people and the tyrants. And Jannah would say, what is wrong with me that only the poor and the humble enter me? And Allah Ta'ala, the most honored, said to Jannah, You are my mercy, with which I grant mercy to those whom I will among my servants. And he said to hell, You are my punishment, which I inflict upon whom I wish from my servants. And I shall fill both of you. So th this is the case with Jahannam. Yawm ayakulu li Jahannam. The day shall come when we shall say to Jahannam, have you become full? And we say, are there more to come? Yawma naqulu li jahannam. This statement of Allah Ta'ala will come and will happen. And this is one of the um, miracles of the Quran that Allah Ta'ala blessed us with that in the Quran are conversations and incidents from the beginning of humanity, throughout humanity, towards the end of times, on the day of judgment in hell and in in jannah we already have those documented conversations some of them which allah ta'ala has revealed and one of them will be that allah ta'ala will say to jahannam have you become filled or are you filled and jahannam will say are there more on the contrary to this this was those people who failed the test but what, what, what about those who passed the test وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ And paradise, Jannah, shall be brought near to the muttaqeen, those who were conscious of Allah Ta'ala, those who were righteous, those who feared Allah Azza wa Jal. It shall be, be brought close to them, not far. We know those who have died and who have entered the grave, uh, may Allah Ta'ala bless my father uh, and the, the parents and the fathers of those listening uh, also with Jannah being brought close to them and not far. May Allah Ta'ala protect them from every punishment. May Allah Ta'ala forgive them for all their sins. And may Allah Ta'ala bless them to end the gentle for those بغير حساب. We know even the people in the grave, uh, there are certain blessings that come to the people of the grave which are of Jannah like or of Jannah, there's some Jannah, there's something related to Jannah that they are feeling the blessings of even in the grave. So let me, let's just count some of them or let's just list some of them. For the pious, it's been reported and there's different uh, narrations about them from the graves of the pious being furnished from Jannah for this person. They are clothed from the garments of Jannah. A gate of Jannah is open for them and the breezes come to them and they smell its, its utur, its fragrance, and they feel 
its delight and they can see its blessing. You imagine, imagine somebody who's able to see Jannah, can't get, he's not, not entering it, but he can see it. What a blessing, what a view. You can see the most amazing view of the most amazing creation uh, that Allah Ta'ala is treating his guests to. That's what Jannah is. Jannah is a place where Allah is the host and you are the guest. So if the hosts of this dunya want to impress their guests, they put on a show. That is according to their capability. You know, you don't go to a guest who's a millionaire and you would typically see this person who will be, you know, who will, who will, who will show his, him show himself and show his, like his karam upon the guest. One of the brothers who used to work for one of these richest people in the world, when the guests came from another country to visit them, they had gold bricks like a mountain in the middle. So when these people come in, they are taken aback about what this person has, and obviously these people are then given the best food because they know they don't want this guest to leave, except that they say that when they went to this person's house to visit, they were treated the best. They had the nicest food. They want to have this, that is a very, very memorable, you know, experience. And then maybe another person who wants to treat those same guests, they come to his house, he will try to be in competition with the other host. But then you can imagine being the guest of Allah Ta'ala and he is the one who is the host. And he is the one who is promising Jannah eternally and the pleasures which are beyond your imagination to hit every pleasurable cell that you know about and do not know about whether it's in your taste buds in your nose smelling in your eyesight in your in your the sounds that you shall hear and in the touch you shall feel maximum pleasure pleasure which you will only improve with every day that's jannah number four this person's grave who is this person's grave who is pious his grave shall be made to be wide and spacious he shall be given the glad tidings of Allah's pleasure and Jannah. Thus, and hence, he shall be longing for the, for the hour to begin. Uh, number six, he will be happy when he sees what he has been given his place in Jannah. And uh, he, will, he will be happy to know that this place that he could have been ended up in Jahannam, that he has not been taken to go there. Finally, he shall, give him, he shall be given the sleep, the sleep of a bridegroom, you know, on the wedding night. The, the amazing pleasure the, the, the person may have experienced, the happiness the person feels, um, you know, that sleep of that person in the grave will be made to feel like that pure happiness, contentment, pleasure, you know. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala bless us to be in the grave in the best conditions. And may Allah Ta'ala bless our loved ones to be in the grave in the best conditions. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from every punishment. May Allah Ta'ala bless us so that our happiness and our comfort and our contentment only increases with every day in this dunya, in the grave, in the barzakh, and in the afterlife. Ameen. As in the ayah of the Quran, Allah Ta'ala says, وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ Jannah shall be brought near to the righteous, not far. This is the promise of Allah Ta'ala that He has given, that Jannah shall be brought closest to the, those who fear Him. Those who sacrifice, those who could, could have done haram, but they didn't do the haram. Those who could have gone with that girl but didn't go. Those who could have listened to that haram uh, sounds and, 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 and music and whatnot but didn't. Those who decided to uh, sacrifice their wealth for the, 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 the neighbor next door or the, um, to teach someone some khair or to help the orphans or to uh, build a masjid or be praying in the front row in the masjid or to pray jama'ah in the masjid, uh, fast in nawafil. All these deeds, you know... Um, Allah Ta'ala does not overlook any one of them. What may be small in your eyes may be great in His. And we shouldn't belittle them. Especially when it comes to acts that we sometimes do very regularly. We have a tendency to overlook the, their significance and their importance, which we shouldn't do. So Jannah shall be brought closest to uh, the pious. And then Allah Ta'ala says, Hada مَا تُوْعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيذٍ مَنْ خَشْيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ This Jannah is what you were promised. 
Allah Ta'ala promises Jannah. Now, if the promise of Allah Ta'ala is fulfilled for you and you see it and experience it in this world, then you know if all his promises are fulfilled to you of what you can see and tangibly experience, then the promise of that which he has given to you, which is beyond this world of what you cannot see, is also just as true, just as valid. And if Allah is making a promise, then we need to latch on to that promise. And we need to know for sure that none of this, that of what we are doing is going to waste. So if I have to sacrifice some things of this world and this you know, immediate temporary pleasure for eternal beyond imagination pleasure, I'm ready to do so because Allah promises me. And Allah says, Azza wa Jal, and I want us to really uh, hone in on, on, on these points here. So Allah Ta'ala says, this is promised لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيظٍ now, now this is amazing, this is very amazing. This has been promised, Allah Ta'ala could have said, this is promised to the ones whom are awabin hafid, the ones who are returning to Allah Ta'ala and, and are fulfilling and preserving their promise with Him. So awab is the one who's returning back to Him from, you could say, whether it is sin, distraction or whatnot, a person who he's, he's making mistakes, he's distracted, he's sinning, but he's always turning back to Allah Ta'ala. He's always, he, doesn't, he doesn't let himself, even if he falls into sin, even if he falls into weakness, he or she falls into weaknesses, falls into sin again and again and again. He keeps returning back to Allah Ta'ala again and again and again. Allah Ta'ala says, for a person like that, this is what Jannah is prepared. Allah Ta'ala knows your weakness. He knows your struggles. As Allah Ta'ala says in the same uh, surah, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ I created human beings. I know what you whisper within yourself. I know what you're going through. Allah says, I know and I'm promising Jannah for the one who keeps coming back to me despite falling and going off path. That's something which is very hopeful for us. That we're not, it's not just, not just there that we're only gonna, it's only for those who are constantly on one trajectory and never gonna go off and never gonna forget and never be neglectful and never make a mistake. No. Jannah is promised for every person who turns, comes back to Allah Ta'ala and he's hafiz, he's preserving, he's protecting, he is guarding his promise guarding his covenant he knows what he has promised to Allah Ta'ala and he's trying to be he's trying his best he's trying his best to protect his iman and protect his faith and not let not let anybody come and snatch his faith from him you're on guard and that's what we have to be we have to be on guard we don't you know when you're not on guard what happens is you know, how do we understand somebody who does guard duty how do we understand somebody who, who protects others from coming into a location? How do we understand uh, filters that already exist before they come to you? All, all those are mechanisms by which they, they protect against external forces and external enemies. And if you don't have that, then you're open game. You're open to attack. You're open to, you are weak at every point. You have to get into your mentality that, you know, in actual fact, I have to be on point. I have to be on guard. I have to see, okay, you know, I have to make sure every, you know, uh, where, I'm, where the dangers are to me and my faith. Allah Ta'ala says, Man rahmana bil wa ja'a munib. Whoever fears Allah Ta'ala, whoever fears the most merciful, unseen. This is the test. Some people may say, uh, why, you know, if I could see Allah Azza wa Jal, I would f behave a certain way. If I, could, if I saw the Jal myself, I'd do a certain thing. If I was living at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, etc. If I was at the time of the companions, I would have been like this, etc. etc. The, the fact is the test of life, in, 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 it includes being tested by that which you cannot see. A huge test. When Iman grows 
it gives you certainty to the level where you would have more faith in what you can't see than what you even sometimes can see. That's how much faith you can have. And that's not faith that you can just conjure up in your mind or some intellectually come to. Faith and Iman is given by Allah Ta'ala to someone. We must not forget that Iman is given and Iman is taken away. May Allah Ta'ala protect from our Iman being taken away. And some of the ways in which Iman is taken away is from sins and etc. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. But Allah Azza just says, this paradise, this Jannah is promised to those who come to Allah Ta'ala with a heart which is turning back to Him. Allah Ta'ala says, whoever fears Him, Ar-Rahman, Allah Ta'ala here, whoever fears Allah, Allah Ta'ala used His name Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, whoever fears the most merciful unseen. And He comes with a heart that's constantly returning back to Him. وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ The one who comes with a heart that's turning back to Him. Naturally, in our conversations with people, in our watching things, and our playing certain games, if we're reading certain books, and we are walking, talking, training, you know, uh, shopping, uh, doing all the things that we normally would do, or people typically do in a per day. The distractions are many. But Allah Ta'ala says, the one who fears the Ar-Rahman, and he comes with a heart which keeps coming back to him. This Jannah is promised for these people. And Allah Ta'ala says, Udkhuluha bisalam. Enter into it with peace. You might just, you're just going to go in and just chill, relax, peace. Just, you know, all your toils of life, all your worries in life. You're worried about your bills, you're worried about job, you're worried about money, you're worried about family member, you're worried about what's going to happen, you're worried about your children. All the worries that a person has. May Allah Ta'ala take all our worries away and make everything easy for us. But all these worries, you be gone. Udkhuluha bisalam, ذلك يوم الخلود. That is the day, the eternal day. That day is the day of eternity. That day of entering into Jannah is the day of eternity. ذلك يوم الخلود. That's the day that's going to last forever. If you can just imagine, can't imagine, you know, pleasure forever fun forever enjoyment forever relaxing forever no worries no, nothing udkhuluha bisalam dhalika yawm alkhulud lahum ma yashauna fiha wa ladaina mazid that day will be the day of eternity lahum ma yashaun for them they shall have whatever they want you know this is this is allah who created the heaven and the earth who created the billions of galaxies who created the mountains all these animals has has all these amazing beautiful attributes that we cannot just we just just we just touch the surface on and he is saying you shall you can have whatever you want and with us is even more you know, they shall have whatever their human limitation can think of. But what is in the, what is in the um, you know, Allah Ta'ala, he, he, with Him is much more, beyond your imagination. What no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has ever imagined. Greatest pleasure, the absolute number one pleasure in Jannah will be to finally meet and see Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's an honor that He will only give to certain people. And may Allah Ta'ala bless us to be amongst them. May Allah make that journey easy to Jannah. Ameen. So Allah Ta'ala says, Lahumma yasha'una fiha wa ladayna mazid. And we sh- and, you know, they shall have whatever they want, and we shall give them much more. Now, remember the whole surah has been what about what? It's about pinning down people's minds to the reality of the afterlife okay to to show them prove to them make them understand there shall be an afterlife you don't you know what, what's that famous uh, yolo you only live once well that's not true uh, you only die once you live twice so it is logical it is rational spiritual so many signs revelation all point to the fact 
that there must be justice. The good should be and will be rewarded and those who are evil will be brought to task and there will be many that will be punished by Allah protect us. وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ هُمْ أَشَدُّ مِنْهُمْ بَتْشًا فَنَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ هَلْ مِنْ مَحِيس And how many a generation of people before did we destroy who were far more powerful than them? These people who are denying the afterlife now. Okay. فَنَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ هَلْ مِنْ مَحِيس فَنَقَّبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ They tried to run away somewhere, i.e. from that punishment. Okay, there's an earthquake, i.e. Uh, the punishment was a flood. The punishment was a screeching sound. Did they hal min mahis? Did they did they did they escape Allah's punishment? Didn't escape Allah's punishment. So these tyrants and 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 zalimin and disbelievers and friends of the shaitan and iblis who were just corrupting and corrupting people's minds and taking them away from Allah Taala, blocking every means to Allah Taala. And, and destroying people's hearts and minds and world and afterlife. Did they find any escape from Allah's punishment? Did they, did they manage to get away? Nobody got managed to get away. Did Fir'aun get away? He didn't get away. When Allah, when Allah Ta'ala decreed his end, when they were to be grabbed and thrown and killed and finished off, nobody escaped. So there were people much more powerful before. Nations who were much more powerful. Go look at some of these nations you think, Subhanallah, how did they, four or five thousand years ago, how were they able to do what they did with, with the technology that they had at that time compared to now? Did any of them escape? No. In this, and this should point to us the high recommendation of instruction, guidance to study history. Go study history, study past civilizations. Look at the Romans, look at the Egyptians, look at the Greeks, study them, study nations that you know about, try to see the you know, archaeological findings and of civilizations that existed before, powerful, mighty, from the remnants of their civilizations that have, they've left behind on earth. Look at them, you'll see how powerful they were. Look at them, you'll see how nations rose and how nations fell. And the societies at the point and what their civilizations were like when they did fall. And Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَا ذِكْرَ لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ Indeed, in that is a reminder for who? The one who has a heart, meaning the one who is thinking, reflecting, not somebody who is just dead. أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ Or who is listening. وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ While he is present in mind. This is a reminder what we're speaking about here, what Allah Ta'ala is, has spoken about in the revelation of these specific ayat is a reminder for the one who has a heart that can, that has think, can think and a, and a person's mind who's listening attentively, think. You either thinking or listen and then it should serve as a reminder to you. Because the reality is Everybody knows you will die. The reality is everybody knows within them, they already know they were created by Allah. Every person, even the most staunchest of atheists, whether he himself realizes it or not, he himself has already testified that God created him. He's one God. And he already knows within him about an afterlife. Whether he has been able to find that or consciously state it, Unless it's been, you know, due to him being corrupted by either his own sins and actions or by the society around him. So this is a reminder for the person who's, who can think or who can listen, listen carefully. It's a reminder. A reminder is for the one who already knows something but then has forgotten. So by default, the fitrah has already acknowledged Allah Ta'ala. Alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala. The souls before we were all created on this earth have all testified to Allah Ta'ala. We all said Allah is our Rabb. All human beings have said God is our Rabb. We have a fitrah within us. After the fitrah within ourselves, we have the recognition of right and wrong. That's already in within every human being. And then also things that we see around us. These lessons serve as a reminder. It's not a new lesson. 
it's a reminder for the one who has a, a, a heart to reflect or has a mind to think. Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُغُوبٍ And we certainly created the heavens and the earth and what is in them, what is between them in six days, six periods, however you want to translate it. And وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُغُوبٍ There's no tiredness, weariness touched us. You know, um, I was trying to find that uh, saying of some of these scientists where they try to uh, put into scientific terms a description of the moment of the Big Bang. So, typically speaking, most scientists say that the universe is about 13 and a half billion years old. Uh, Allah knows better. But we'll go, we'll go with that. 13 and a half billion years old. And the way that we've understood how everything in the universe today is expanding in every direction right it's expanding in every direction if you rewind time you go back closer 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 up until you go right to the moment of the big bang okay now the, the more closer you get and we said before the distance between there's between us and some galaxies Billions of light years, and we said last time as well, uh, you know, light traveling in one second, at, which obviously at the speed of light, is about, it, it will go to the distance of what it would take around the earth seven times. So you imagine that's one second. So imagine one minute, how far it's gone. Then imagine, so the nearest star to the sun is four years of light traveling in a distance. Four years of light traveling at its speed that's the nearest star. The distance between us and some galaxies which is billion of light years away. Wallahu alam. So you have massive, a massive beyond. And there's, like, there's billions of stars in one galaxy and there's billions of galaxies. So just it's a, the universe is just humongous. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anbiya, أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمْ do not, the, do not the disbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were all like in one and then we ripped them apart. That action of ripping it apart, the power behind it, you can just imagine the power that it takes to create billions of stars and billions of species and billions of, uh, of uh, various creations of Allah Ta'ala and maintaining it all. I mean, like they say, from the moment of the Big Bang, in that first second, they say, it, it expanded to the side of the Milky Way. Bang! Like, Allah Ta'ala knows better, it probably beyond that. I mean, the power is just beyond imagination, beyond description, you could say. The power that it takes to do that, the precision, the, and everything is not, it's not haphazard. Everything that Allah Ta'ala has created is with a purpose and by design. These unintelligent, foolish individuals who think things are, things are just randomly happening in the earth are just so, you know, I can't find the words to describe such idiocy and, you know, uh, stupidity and foolishness because we all we see when we see Allah's creation is design, is purpose, is a plan. Everything is the ecosystems, the organs, the, the human bodies, the, the organisms themselves, they're all in structures, in superstructures, they're in systems and super systems, and super ecosystems. And it's all integrated like a plan, completely. You can't do one without the other. You can't have an eyelash without the eyelid, without the eyeball, without the eye muscles around it, without the iris, and then the... That's just the one eye. Everything is in co complete cohesion with each other. And Allah Ta'ala says, we did all that and no tiredness come to us. You know, there's nothing. Kun fayakun. That's the power of Allah Ta'ala. That's the might of Allah Ta'ala. That's the greatness of Allah Ta'ala. And He's far beyond what, what we just described. So you trying to tell us that the one who did that is unable to resurrect you after you die. Are you stupid? Are you foolish? Do you have a mind? Can you not think? Can you not listen? Allah Ta'ala created all this and you can't 
come to, to, to your, into your mind and, 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 with, and, and understand that you shall be resurrected. The land that dies due to the sun and the no water and, and the life that which exists within that dead land comes back to life. And just like we, when we were, when we, oh, when we were human beings decomposed into the body, into the graves and into the earth, they shall be resurrected as well. وَمَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُغُوبِ and no weariness, no touch, no nothing, nothing, no weariness touched us. So, resurrecting 10 billion people is easy. Easy for Allah Ta'ala. Well, who are you? Nothing. We look at the creation of the heavens and the earth. You know, when we look at the stars, we all, but see, we all, it's all a very humbling experience. Look at the sun. It's, that in of itself is a humbling experience. This mighty sun, which is a million times the size of the earth, giving us this uh, amount of light and heat. I mean, look how that mighty that sun is. Well, I mean, the one who made it is even mightier, far more mightier. Beyond our imagination, mightier. Allah Ta'ala says, after saying all this, فَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُ Have sabr about what they say. They're denying you, they're denying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi they're denying the Quran, they're denying all these things, but you have sabr. Sabr means does it, patience means, it doesn't mean you just sit down. Patience means, it doesn't mean that you are very um, hands off and you, 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 you just sit back and don't do anything. No, patience means have patience in continuing on the path. Have patience with being on the path. Stick to the path. That's patience. Patience doesn't mean just sit back, sit back and sit down and, you know, uh, hands off everything. Fosbir ala ma yaqulun. Have patience with what they say. وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ And do dhikr of your Rabb. Remember Allah Ta'ala and He shall remember you. Remember Allah Ta'ala and your sadness shall go away. Remember Allah Ta'ala and your depression shall go away. Remember Allah Ta'ala and your worries shall go away. Have patience on the path and glorify your Rabb. Connect to your Rabb. Think about your Rabb. Remember your Rabb. قَبْلَ تُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ الْغُرُوبِ before the rising of the sun and before its setting. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحُ وَأَدْبَارُ السُّجُودِ And in a part of the night and after the salah, after the prostration. وَاسْتَمِعْ يَوْمَ يُنَادِ الْمُنَادِ مِنْ مَكَانٍ قَرِيبٍ And listen on the day when the caller will call from a place as is close by. يَوْمَ يَسْمَعُونَ السَّيْحَةَ بِالْحَقِّ the day they shall hear the blast in truth, ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُرُوجِ That's the day they're going to come out. That's the day they'll emerge from their graves. إِنَّا نَحْنُ It is we who give life. It is we who cause death. وَإِلَيْنَ الْمَصِيرِ And it is back to us, the destination. We decided to give somebody life. Somebody can be married 50 years and not have a child. They only have a child when Allah permits them. When Allah gives them that baby. And that baby when he was born, was, his lifespan was written and decreed then. This child will live for 60 years, 50 years, 2 years, 1 year. It, it is we who decide to give life. We give life. We cause death. And to us is that final destination. That day, that day, which is a Yom al that day of coming out, that day when the earth op opens up and people shall come out their graves rushing. That's the day which is easy for us. That, 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 sorry, that resurrection is easy. They're going to come out, come out their graves running, rushing. And then Allah Ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ حَشْرٌ عَلَيْنَا يَسِيرٌ That hashr, that gathering of everybody up, all those 10 billion or 11 billion people, human beings, or how many billion people will have lived on this earth by that stage. ذَلِكَ حَشْرٌ عَلَيْنَا يَسِيرٌ That's easy for us. If we could have created the whole heavens and the earth, what's, uh, what's the resurrection of these small amount of people? نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ we know what these people say. And you are not upon them a, a compeller, you know, somebody to force faith or iman into anybody's heart. 
فذكر بالقرآن ما يخاف وعيد so remind with the Quran those who fear my threat and fear my warning الحمد لله سبحان الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد